Good morning, and welcome to Concordia Lutheran Church's virtual worship. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Happy are those who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the ways of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on God's teaching day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season. With leaves that do not wither, everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall be destroyed. The psalmist reminds us this morning how good it is when we walk in the ways of God, to study God's teaching, to understand what is good and what God requires of us. It brings goodness to our lives. It brings security and a sense of being planted in the right place. We become like trees with strong and secure with deep roots, roots that help us to navigate an ever-increasing complex world. It is in the word of God that we find life, we find comfort, and we find the way of righteousness. For us Christians, of course, that way is paved by Jesus Christ. It is through Jesus that we find what God desires for us. It's through Jesus that we find out what is righteous. It's through Jesus that we are planted like trees. What is it then that Jesus has taught us? What is the lessons that we're supposed to learn to live by? Today in our gospel reading, we're going to hear Jesus pray for us. Pray to God that we might continue to walk in the ways that Jesus taught us. That we might continue to live as Jesus taught us to live. And of course, as we know, and as we talk about almost all the time, that's always harder than we think. We know this, but the psalmist tells us it is what ultimately gives us life. It's what helps us each day to rise up and do the next best thing we can. We are offered a lot of options in our lives, and we are given freedom to make lots of choices. We are given that freedom by God. And of course, there's forgiveness when we choose the wrong way. But there's something else that I've noticed in people of faith, and that is our desire to actually want to do the right thing, a true desire to want to live as Jesus has taught us. I know that people really want to do the right thing, and I also know how hard it is sometimes to choose and to know what that is, which is why we have to continue to learn the word of God. We have to continue to be planted and to know Jesus and to continue that relationships. Well, that's what we'll be talking about in our sermon this morning. I'd like to thank Jim Doyle for being here to record. I'd like to thank Gail for being here to sing and Janet for being here to play. Let us sing our gathering song together. Praise the one who breaks the darkness, number 843. Praise the one who preaches. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious and glorious God, you have chosen us as your own, and by the powerful name of Christ you protect us from evil. By your Spirit transform us in your beloved world, that we may find our joy in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our gospel for this morning comes to us from the Gospel of St. John, the 17th chapter. Glory Lord. to you, O Lord. Jesus prayed, I have made your, na your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and I have kept, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them in your name that you have given me, so they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. But now I'm coming to you, and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they did not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am asking you to take, I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for the sake of, I sanctif and for their sake, I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Let us pray. Dear Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. Amen. So things in our world continue to uh, open up, right? Uh, the more they do, the more we seem to get back to some sense of normal, or at least what was normal before the pandemic started. Just a couple of days ago, the CDC said that people who were fully vaccinated could go maskless indoors and outdoors, and that seems like a pretty major step and change. Even here at Concordia, things are seeming to get back to somewhat normal. This week, for example, I met with a family who were grieving in person, and I haven't done that in quite a long time. I met with a couple who was going to be married this summer. I haven't done that in a long time. And I met with some people who were struggling to pay their rent. I haven't done that in a long time. It's one of those things that we did, used to do, I used to do a lot of before the pandemic, because our congregation is about helping people and we try to help people who get behind and help them to catch up so that they can go on. This particular couple I met with were having some extra problems. This one, they were working, but the money they were making just wasn't enough to pay the rent. They had a place to live, but it was way too expensive as rents are these days. And on top of all that, these two people happened to both be ex-felons. It's hard to make it in this world if you are an ex-felon. Hard to find a place that will rent to you and hard to find a place that will hire you to do a job. So what do all these things have to do with our gospel this morning? To me, they are the things that our church is sent out into the world to do. We have a congregation because we want to help people know about God. We want them to be able to have successful relationships in their lives. We want them to be able to have family units that love and support each other. So the church marries people. We want people to know that God is with them when they grieve and they lose someone they love. We want them to know the promise of God's love carries into eternity. 
We want to have them to have comfort as they face the grief. So our church helps people to do that. We have funerals for people. We want people to know that being an ex-felon shouldn't define them for the rest of their lives. We want them to know that they too belong to God and God forgives them. We want them to know that the world is a cold and might be a cold and heartless place, but the church is filled with compassion and mercy. So we offer a listening ear and some help if we can. And that's what Jesus is saying this morning, that the world is a cold place. When in the Gospel of St. John, when they talk about the world, he is talking about the harshness of the system, the system that just takes people in and spits them out, a system that only sees us as a number or an income bracket, a system that takes no measure of who we really are. That is the world for John. And Jesus prays today that his followers will not be part of that system, that they offer the world something else. They offer people another place to land. It is a place where they can be treated as a person, where you're treated as a beloved child of God. I want to say none of those encounters that I had this week were, quote unquote, members of our congregation. The family who wanted me to do the funeral actually said to me, I know we're not members, Pastor, but would you be willing to do this funeral for us? I told them, I don't care if you're members or not. Membership is just an institutional way we do business in the church. It's how we decide who gets to vote on the budget and other things. But membership is never required for us to be able to help somebody. In fact, the whole reason our congregation exists is to help other people. Of course, we who are members get something out of it. We get to be reminded of God's love for us and for the world. We get to hear that God forgives our sins. We get to form relationships that are deep. But all of that stuff just serves the higher purpose of spreading God's love to others. Jesus never said, go and make members of all people. He said, go and make disciples of all people. It serves the higher purpose of doing what Jesus has called us to do. Jesus calls us to help, to serve, to love, to care. You know, in the New Testament, we are told 10 different times in different verses, in different books, love your neighbor. It's a consistent message over and over. The Bible doesn't say anything about modern issues like abortion, gay marriage, women's rights, trans rights, voting rights, tax rates, or racism. What it does tell us over and over to do is to find love. To love as Jesus loves us. To love as we love ourselves to care about others as Jesus would, to care about other families just as much as we care about our own. One of the most interesting facts, things about Jesus' prayer this morning is that it doesn't ask us to be removed from the world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one, Jesus says. We often think that being a Christian is not being part of the world. It's about floating above the fray and not being involved in all the sinful things that other people do. But Jesus prays for us for something different. Jesus prays that we would remain in the world to fight for a better world and to take down those systems that try to oppress others. Because of this, Jesus knows that we will face opposition in the world. Jesus knows that having mercy on, mercy on people or caring for each other is not the way of the world. It's not how the system works. And to act differently threatens that system itself. It throws it into peril. Because the system only wants to get out of you what it needs to survive. It only, want, it only cares about you so that it can get out what people, what it really needs from you. But in God's expansive vision of the earth and all those who dwell in it, everything has value and worth. The whole earth, plants and trees, the biggest whale, the smallest fish. Every person has value and worth too. No one is greater or less than any other. Sometimes it's hard to imagine such a world, such a place. It's hard to think that it's even possible. I'm holding out hope. Even as I'm called all sorts of bad names for believing in such crazy things, I believe them. Not because I'm some great reformer, dreamer, but because Jesus showed us in his life and death that it is possible. Jesus showed us that the kingdom of God is among us, that the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus gave us the word of God 
and that there is light in the world, that there is love in and around us, and that we are the ones who God gave to help make that a reality, not just some distant hope, but something we can live out right now. We can do that. We can do that, but not listening to people that are members when they ask for help. We can do that now by taking time to help people as they come out of prison. We can do that now by creating space for families of all shapes and sizes to learn to love each other. We can do that now by pointing to the greater things of life and by being in Jesus Christ, by taking in his word, we can be God's people here and now. On this earth, we can learn to resist the systems that dehumanize others. We can learn to be merciful and loving. And in doing that, we become the people of God. So this day, may you find love in your heart for others. May God's word live in you and through you. May God be with you in all your family relationships, when you mourn and when you need help from others. And may God help you know how to resist the system of the world so that you will be a follower of Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> Our hymn of the day today is Rise, O Son of Righteousness, number 657. In this Easter time, we confess our common faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Holy God, in Christ Jesus, the joy of the church is made complete. Root the church in your word and unify us as Christ's body. Send us into the world as your loving people, ready to testify to your spirit at work. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Mighty God, the world is your handiwork, displaying your creative impulses. Seas teem with life, forests reach up to praise you. 
and the mystery of life lies deep in the soil. Guard and keep this world for the well-being of your creatures. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gracious sovereign, those who follow your ways are like trees planted near streams of water. Establish the leaders of nations and all in authority in your grace and truth. Strengthen them so that the people they serve will have abundant life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Generous Savior, you befriend those who are sick, suffering, poor, lonely, outcast, rejected, or sick. Grant healing and love to all in need, especially Christina, David, Edward, Emma, Dorothy, Rebecca, Alva, Gretchen, Adeline, Karen, Bill, Teresa, Kathy, Kim, Ken, Sal, Valerie, Florence, Teresa, Vicki, Gail, Thomas, Ernie, Karen, Gethsemane Lutheran Church, Carol, Nicole, Carol, John, Dean, Mike, Helen, Barbara, Bill, Liesel, and Karen. We pray for those who grieve, the family and friends of Betsy, Joe, Kathleen, Paul, Tim, Dick, Judy, Grace, Eric. Remember our homebound, Betty Lee and Florence, and our men and women in the service, Isaac, Gus, Daniel, and Joshua. Give them tangible signs of your steadfast love. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Creator God, here in this community we share the gifts of praying, learning, and supporting one another. Give us thankful hearts as we claim the gifts that are unique to us and keep us from being envious of others with different gifts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Saving God, your wonderful promise is the gift of, eter of eternal life in Jesus. Through the witnesses of those who have died in you, strengthen us in this gift of life. We cherish the memory of all your saints. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Hear our own prayers may be offered aloud or in our hearts. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May your lives be filled with Christ. May your lives overflow with the love of God into the world. And may you this day know God's word and live in grace. As Jefferson Bethke once said, love others so radically they wonder why. Or as Pope John Paul II has said, do not be afraid to be saints. Follow Jesus Christ, who is a source of freedom and light. Be open to the Lord, so that he may lighten your ways. Or Mother Teresa, followed, following Jesus is simple, but not easy. Love it, love until it hurts, and then love more. Or Denzel Washington, put God first in everything you do. Everything that I have is by the grace of God. Understand that. It's a gift. I don't always stick with him, but God always sticks with me. Or Sylvester Stallone, the more I go to church and the more I turn myself over to the process of believing in Jesus and listening to his word and having him guide my hand, I feel as though the pressure is off me now. And now may our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the gift of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us sing together our sending song, Son of God, Eternal Savior, number 655.
Thank you for joining us this morning for our virtual worship. I hope in our song and our praying and our words that you found some way to grow closer to Jesus and to know his word so that you might have love and that you might be in this world fighting against it. Um, next Sunday, we will, of course, have our uh, same 10 o'clock uh, online worship, but we're also having our first outdoor worship of the season. So if you'd like to come and join us and bring a chair and sit on the lawn, um, please come and join us for that. I'd like to thank Jim for being here again and Gail and of course Janet. And if you'd like to support our ministry, you can do that by clicking on the PayPal link in the comments section. <clears throat> and now go in peace, share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.